The chair recognizes the gentleman from South Carolina, the chairman of the Oversight and Government Reform Committee, Mr. Gowdy, for five minutes. Thank you, Chairman Goodlatte. Uh, Director Ray, somewhere uh, today, a group of our fellow citizens will be asked if they can be fair, impartial, free of bias before they sit in judgment of others on a jury. Even in the smallest of courtrooms where there are nothing but empty seats and no television cameras. Uh, somewhere uh, today, those selected to sit in judgment of their fellow citizens will be told that they must wait until the very last witness testifies and the last piece of evidence has been introduced before they can even begin to deliberate on an outcome. So if our fellow citizens should be impartial and free of bias, and if our fellow citizens must wait until the last piece of evidence is introduced, the last witness is called, before they can reach a, a verdict, a conclusion, an outcome, then I don't think it's asking too much that the Department of Justice and the FBI um, do the same thing. Uh, there is no member of Congress who holds the department and the Bureau in higher esteem than I do. Um, there are others who hold you in high esteem, but I would take uh, second place to no one. And I have defended the department and the Bureau when, frankly, it was pretty damn lonely to do so. Uh, when my Democrat friends were asking that Jim Comey be prosecuted for a Hatch Act violation about this time last year, they now want him canonized. But this time last year, they wanted him prosecuted for a Hatch Act violation. When your predecessor sat right where you're sitting and was embroiled in a fight with this little tiny startup company called Apple, I was on the side of the Bureau. When there are calls for special counsel, even today, I reject them because I trust the women and men of the Department of Justice and the Bureau, the professionals that we hired, to do their job. And the vast majority of line prosecutors and line agents are exactly what you described in your opening statement. They are exactly what you described. But unfortunately, the last two years have not been good years for the Bureau and they have not been good years for the department. We had an attorney general meet with the spouse of a target of an investigation on the tarmac and asked that an investigation be called something other than an investigation, but be called a matter. We've had an attorney general recuse himself from the largest, most significant investigation currently in his office. We had the director of the FBI appropriate a major charging decision away from the Department of Justice because he was concerned that the public wouldn't have confidence if the Department of Justice handled that decision themselves. We had an FBI director write two politically volatile letters weeks before an election. Uh, we had an FBI director memorialize conversations he had with the President of the United States because he didn't trust the President's recall of those conversations. And I think what frustrates some folks is when Director Comey wanted special counsel for President Trump, he leaked one of those memos. When he didn't have confidence in Loretta Lynch, we didn't hear a word about it. There were no leaks that prompted special counsel when he didn't trust Loretta Lynch. There were leaks when he decided he didn't trust President Trump. We've had an acting AG fired. We've had the director of the FBI fired. And we can't manage to find prosecutors who haven't donated to presidential candidates. Out of all the universe of prosecutors that you used to work with, and I used to work with, and Johnny Ratcliffe used to work with, we can't find a dozen that haven't donated to major political candidates. And now we have special agents struck. It was the Inspector General, not the Department of Justice, not the Bureau who found these texts. It was the Inspector General. And I share your confidence in his objectivity. I share it. But it shouldn't have been the Inspector General that had to bring this to our attention 12 months after it happened. And that same agent is the one who reportedly interviewed Secretary Clinton in an interview that you and I have never seen conducted that way before. 
to have potential witnesses and potential targets sit in on a witness interview, I appreciate your professionalism and your unwillingness to want to say how unprecedented that is, so I'm not going to ask you. I'll just tell you. It's unprecedented. And that same agent is alleged to have been the one that changed the language. You're right. They are synonyms. Extremely careless is a synonym for grossly negligent, which begs the question, why change it? But you and I know why it was changed. It was changed because the statute says grossly negligent. And if you're not going to charge someone, God knows you don't want to track the statute with the language that you use. That would be stupid. What's also stupid is to do that memo two months before you've interviewed the target. That memo was drafted before the last witness was interviewed. Director, it was drafted before the target of the investigation was even, was even interviewed. Which makes people wonder, was the decision made before the interviews were finished. And now we believe that that same agent is also involved in the investigation into President Trump and his campaign and may have interviewed Michael Flynn. That hasn't been confirmed, and we don't know what role, if any, he took in the preparation of documents for court filing. So I'm going to say this because I'm out of time, and I appreciate the chairman's patience with me. You have a really important job. When all else fails in this country, we want to be able to look to the FBI. We want to be able to look to the Department of Justice. When all the other institutions we trust, including Congress, appear to be broken, we want to be able to look to you. It's been a really bad two years. I am counting on you to help answer our questions in Congress, our fellow citizens' questions, but I am more than anything counting on you to go back to work for that blindfolded woman holding a set of scales that really doesn't give a wit about politics. That's the FBI that I want. Time Mr. gentleman has Mr. expired. Chairman, the director Mr. is Chairman, welcome I, to respond. Just a 30-second response. First, let me say, Congressman Gowdy, I'm, I'm uh, well aware of your longstanding support for the Bureau and the Department, and I want you to know we appreciate it. Uh, and second, I want to assure you and every other member of this committee that there is no scenario under which I would have taken the President's nomination if I were not committed to the kind of independent, impartial, objective, and professional pursuit of the facts. I wouldn't be here if I weren't committed to that, and I can give this committee that commitment. The uh, Chair recognizes the uh, gentleman from Idaho, Mr. Labrador, for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Director Ray, um, I really appreciated your opening statement uh, to this committee. You and the great men and women of the FBI have an important and very difficult job. Um, that is why during the time of the Clinton investigation, I actually refused to question the integrity of your predecessor. In fact, I spent uh, dozens of town hall meetings as a Republican defending the integrity of your predecessor and disagreeing with some of my constituents uh, about the things that they were saying. And, but now it's become pretty clear, pretty clear to me that my belief in the integrity of your predecessor was misplaced. Could you please tell us what the letters FBI stand for? We know it stands for Federal Bureau of Investigation, but it also stands for something else. Uh, we consider FBI to stand for the words fidelity, bravery, and integrity. Mr. Director, I have begun to have serious doubts about some in the FBI, about serious doubts about the integrity of some of the highest uh, levels of the FBI because of actions taken by your agency over the past two years. And that is so disappointing because your agency does such important work, as you expressed in your opening statement, and that is to make America safe and secure. And it depends upon much, most of the work that you do. Uh, it's a matter of public record that Hillary Clinton's aides, Cheryl Mills and Huma Abedin, blatantly lied to the FBI investigators about the existence of Hillary Clinton's private emails. And we know that an FBI agent, Strzok, investigated both Clinton and Trump. In fact, Strzok was present at many of these interviews. Director, were Sherry Mills, Cheryl Mills, Huma Habedin, or any other Clinton associates ever charged by the FBI for lying to them? Uh, Congressman, the handling of the 
Clinton email investigation, including all the other participants in that matter, uh, is the subject of an outside independent I, I investigation, so question, which is looking what, what, into that. Was anybody charged for lying to the FBI? No charges were filed against anybody in that investigation. How many Clinton advisors were granted immunity during the email server investigation? I don't know the answer to that. But there were several Clinton advisors who were granted immunity. Isn't that correct? Hmm. I, I believe that's true, but I don't know the answer to that sitting here right now. So we have recently heard that Strzok was the official who signed the documents that officially opened uh, the collusion inquiry into the Tr Russia-Trump collusion inquiry. How many Trump administration advisors have been granted immunity during the Russia special counsel investigation? Uh, for questions about the special counsel investigation, I'd refer you to the special counsel. I don't know the answer to that question. So if we want to believe in the integrity of the FBI, explain to me why the double standard? When you have agents and, and people who work for the Clinton administration who were granted immunity or who lied to the FBI and they're not charged, what about, why is there a double standard today? Congressman, we in the FBI are committed to not having a double standard. But you haven't been committed over the last two years, so are you doing something to correct that? As I think I said to one of your colleagues, um, in every meeting that I go to since taking over director, uh, as director, I try to emphasize the importance of following the rules, following the process, following the law, following the Constitution, being faithful to our core values, okay, and so not I allowing political biases to affect our decision making. Well, and I where there have one, been situations I, I where there's a question, question yeah. there's an inspector yeah. general Reclaim investigation. Reclaim my time. I only have one more minute left. So can you tell me definite, definitively whether Michael Flynn violated the Logan Act? That's not a question I can answer. Um, I actually believe that the Logan Act is unconstitutional, by the way. But if we're going to not have a double standard, can uh, you tell me whether the FBI is investigating former President Barack Obama for violating the Logan Act. He has been spending the last couple of weeks traveling the whole United States, I mean the whole world, complaining about the foreign policy of the United States. Is the FBI currently investigating the former President of the United States for violating the Logan Act? Congressman, as, as you may know, we will not confirm or deny the existence of any ongoing investigation. Do you think we should investigate Minority Leader Pelosi for meeting with Assad, despite objections from then-sitting President Bush and Vice President Cheney in 2007? Again, I'm not going to comment on speculate about whether or not there's let's, an active investigation. Let's not investigation. use an elected official. Should we investigate Dennis Rodman, who went uh, to meet with the North uh, Koreans? Should we investigate him for that? Same answer. All right. I want you to help me bring back the integrity of the FBI to the United States. I love the FBI. I even considered, as a young attorney, to join the FBI. Uh, I grew up on the show, uh, and, and I have great love for the work that men and women at the FBI do, and I hope that we can do something over the next two years that will counteract what happened over the last two years of the, the gentleman's the time has expired.